I think that uh, comparison n'est pas raison, and that uh, we cannot compare the situation of uh, Turkey in Cyprus or Morocco with... Uh, but, but it looks uh, like... We, we can't compare for a lot of reasons. The first one is that uh, uh, there is no refugee, and there is no people who are parked in areas, and there is no the Arab money behind uh, who is fighting against integration. If you look at what happened uh, uh, since 1948, that um, the refugees have never been integrated in the countries who have, uh, I would say, welcomed. They have been unwelcomed everywhere. And it is very strange. You see the situation, for example, in Jordan. In Jordan, there is the second largest city in Jordan is a, a refugee camp of Syrian. That is the second largest city. And there is no noise about this. Nobody is making a big noise about the fact that uh, in the Syrian-Jordan border, there is a big camp which is almost as large as Amman, simply because it is between Arabs, and um, uh, no one is fighting against this. Uh, there are some people who are fighting against the domination of uh, uh, Bashar al-Assad, but for religious regions, uh, uh, reasons and not for uh, moral re reasons. And when you see the way al-Qaeda is operating, we have seen some... Uh, a reportage on what was happening with the Al-Qaeda people, and they were saying, we are Al-Qaeda. Uh, it, it is very strange that the, the European are not reacting against this. So the, the situation is not comparable. I would like to try to come to something which is more positive and to see if there is a way. And we say always that when there is a will, there is a way. There is two maybe parallel approaches. One which is about the peace process and the political issue and how to deal with that. And I think that if we link everything to the peace process, we will make no progress because we will be uh, tied to what will happen with the peace process. And the peace process is a, is a two uh, parties issue, at least two maybe many more, but at least the Palestinian and the Israelis. And in the Palestinian, there is at least three different approaches. There is the Hamas, there is the influence of the Hezbollah, and there is the Fatah and the OLP, the PLO. So when you look at this, it's not very easy to deal with uh, uh, the, the Palestinians. So if, if we uh, consider that everything is linked to the peace process, I think that um, it will be extremely hard to help the Israeli image to improve with the public opinion who has an influence in the government. The problem today is that if we are speaking about labeling oranges or we are labeling some other aspect, it's because the public opinion doesn't care. If the public opinion was caring about this, they would not done, do, do such a thing, because they will say, oh, my voters will not like it. The voters in Europe doesn't care. They don't care about what the politicians are deciding regarding Israel, because it's a small issue, and they don't see what is the consequence of that small issue. And as it has been pointed out so rightly, it is linked to the peace process, and it is something which is used by politicians and by foreign policy in order to create some issues with Israel. So we should have two work streams. One work stream which is about the peace process and the politicians and how they should handle this issue. The other one is how can we gain uh, some moral ground on some very important aspects which is how can we improve the image of Israel toward the public opinions. And we don't need to do that with the Chinese or with the Indian because anyway, public opinion in this country doesn't care about Israel. 
we have to, th and, and the government do not care about the public opinion of, the chi of China. If, if they have one, they have one, I must say. So it is much more with some key countries which are leading. It is the US, UK, Germany, France, which are these four countries who are counting a lot more than any other when it comes to Israel. They have to feel that Israel is essential for the region. It is a country which is bringing a lot to humanity. And we have to develop a communication program about what Israel is giving to humanity. Uh, it's giving back to humanity after having paid a huge price during the war. And what has been done in this country is something which is unparalleled. And no one country in the world, as uh, Roger said it at the beginning of his speech, has done as much as Israel has done for humanity, be it in science, be it in integration of population coming from a lot of regions of the world, be it in uh, technology, be it in learning and how to make uh, uh, some uh, people uh, moving uh, to a better standard of living and a better level of education, be it in uh, uh, the uh, agriculture, and we know that agriculture and research of agriculture, you go to Sdeboker, you will see a lot of research which is just staggering uh, and that everyone should admire. And there is all this aspect that has to be uh, communicated uh, outside and has to be communicated first with the people who have a voice, the people who can write, the journalist, the intellectual, uh, the, the people who have an influence and that this, they can take their uh, computer and write something about uh, what's happening in Israel and say, beware, this country is indispensable to humanity. These people have suffered enormously from us, we, the uh, Western world. Uh, it's not the uh, Chinese who have uh, done any pogrom on, on the Jews. It's not the Indian who have killed the Jews during the war. It is in Europe, it is there, uh, and it is the nest of anti-Semitism. And this is the region where people can feel guilty about what they have done and that we, they have to feel proud of what these people have achieved. And this is what we have to say to the people. I'm sorry to say it with a little bit of passion, but I feel it.